Maybe this is what Rihanna was talking about when she said she's trying to save the world in regards to the success of Fenty Beauty, including all shades of black and brown people. I am having a hard time understanding what saving the world looks like from billionaires who continuously are selling us things when we don't have any money. When is enough enough for all of y'all? Let's talk about it. Y'all don't know what time it is. I got the black bean neck on. What's going on, you all? I'm about to stir the pot, and girl, it's not gumbo, but it's going to be a good roux. Speaking of roux and the color and all the other stuff, child, Tyler right now is getting ate up on social media for her <laughs> Breakfast Club interview about blackness or non blackness or colored people. I have so many things to say about this Rihanna Fenty hair situation. Rihanna recently came out and dropped Fenty hair products. And it is a never ending growing empire of Rihanna and more things marketed towards people to purchase because of celebrity. And it is becoming like inhumane at this point. Like I can't say it any other way between her, Beyonce and other celebrities and stuff who are using their likeness to make fans pressure fans to purchase things. And people say, well, the fans, you know, they make their choice. They don't have to do it. They don't have to do it. But that's how parasocial relationships work. And Rihanna, Beyonce, and other folks are very notorious for that, and they understand that. Um, and they're not by themselves. A lot of folks do it. Actors do it as well. Um, like, all celebrities do it. Even politicians do it at this point. You see what's going on with Trump. And, you know, even, like, Trump selling, what was it, Trump steaks, Trump... Um, like all types of things. We now have Rihanna, which a couple years ago, I never forget, she says she's trying to save the world. This was during the Trump um, era of him being president and stuff. And it was just a bunch of, it was a bunch of crazy things going on. And Rihanna was dealing with a lot of success with Fenty, like all of the things. And people were just excited to see um, like makeup being inclusive of like black women. Like, you know, black women have, for the longest, like struggled finding uh, makeup to match their skin tone. So when Rihanna did this and she included all of these like different, you know, colors and shades for makeup and stuff, like she was, you know, folks were bigging her up. And then she had the, you know, the Fenty underwear lingerie thing that became a success because she included so many different people, um, different like body sizes and colors and all the other stuff. And I, for one, find it really weird that a person who benefits from the utmost of desire is able to sell inclusivity. <laughs> I find that like, like a conundrum, like <laughs> what, it, but see that goes to show us how desire capital works because we are purchasing this from a person who benefits the most. And it's weird. It's really weird. And I already did a video about Beyonce and Sacred and how I found it weird that, you know, the products that she's pushing and all these things, Beyonce is able to do that based off of desire, like solely based off of that. And a lot of people didn't understand that. Like people see this person using this product and they ultimately want to look like these very desirable celebrities there's a reason why kylie jenner was able to sell her things because two young folks young girls whatever they wanted to look like kylie jenner and we live in this world where we think that we're learning more and understanding anti-blackness and desire and how it works but we are forever engaging in it on social media like on specifically like instagram um even twitter now um even like you know folks don't use snapchat as much but even tiktok like desire works its way in everything um so all of us unfortunately somewhat are trying to be beautiful 
and we get reinforced time and time again of what is considered beautiful and you know the folks who benefited from the most desire are able to sell beauty because at the end of the day like hey girl like you are beautiful you are the visuals you are beautiful but psychologically a lot of us unfortunately are purchasing these things to be close to these celebrities or to feel as though we will look as good as them even how we see underwear campaigns and um clothes and stuff runways and stuff like a lot of the clothes look even quote unquote better because it is on a desirable body that is the premise when you go on boohoo man and all mnl and all these like asos you see these very desirable uh men and women like you see men who are often lighter skin dark skinned men who are very like chiseled and have like very um like a gym body even if they're not a gym body is slim they are very very masculine um because that is what sells um and i and i, I think people need to understand that that's why i've always had an issue uh, with a lot of the um queer owned jock straps and lingerie um uh, folks because like whatever you all know but the girls who know know because they use desire to sell these like pieces of fabric for 30 40 dollars and they're not the only ones like you know even um who was not hollister but abercrombie and fitch and all of their brands, specifically Abercrombie and Fitch was called out. And it was a whole documentary about how they use white boys, very desirable white boys um, to sell the product. Like you had to look a certain type of way. And they even went as far as having desirable workers in the store. They did not want people who did not meet the beauty standards to be wearing their clothes. They didn't want them in the stores because you should be wearing it. This is only for this. We're not being inclusive at all. We don't want that. We want specific folks to buy it. But people are going to do it because they want to look like these people. Now, even I have wrestled with that when buying clothes and stuff. Like, do I like the clothes or do I like the person in the clothes? Because no shade, a lot of fashion is just desire. A lot of fashion that I see is based off of just desire. Um, and we won't go there we can and just going back to rihanna now selling us like hair care products when rihanna has lots of resources lots of coins has a dedicated team to make sure that her things look good her hair her makeup all of the things so to sell us that we can have our hair look as good as rihanna's by using these products. Like you're not a scientist. Like Rihanna is not in Dexter's laboratory with DD and, and, and um, the monkey um, Superman. Like she ain't in there coming with these chemicals and doing all the other stuff. Beyonce ain't in there too. Like they're not in here really doing research. Like other folks are doing the research. Folks are way more knowledgeable, but because of desire, they're able to sell it. And because they are celebrities, they also benefit from from desire. They can sell it and, you know, masses like this. And the issue becomes like for me, when is enough enough for someone like a Rihanna who is straight? Like her brand is doing amazing. Um, I don't know how the Savage Fenty underwear stuff that um, pyramid scheme situation where you had to buy a subscription to purchase stuff and you had to sign in was very predatory. Um, and I'm sure folks have done videos about that, but um, when is enough enough? Like, when is enough enough? Like, your makeup is doing amazing. It's in all the stores. It's selling out. When do you decide, like, hey, like, I'm good. I don't need any more money. And I don't think capitalism allows us to. I think about how a lot of us um, will be in this space where if we made a little bit more money, we'll be good. Like, we wouldn't have to be as stressed with the bills that we have now. But how capitalism and consumerism works is as soon as we make that money, we're pressured to spend more money on other things. Like you got to get this, you got to get this, like you're making more money. And it becomes a never ending cycle, a never ending cycle of consume, consume, because that is how capitalism is able to survive off us constantly purchasing things, us constantly spending money, to keep the quote unquote economy growing. But the only thing it's doing is growing CEOs pockets and stuff 
right now you have companies talking about they're going to slash uh, prices of groceries amazon fresh said they're going to slash the, the price of their groceries 30 percent. so that means that you all can lower prices so y'all are still bringing in profits and stuff like y'all are not y'all are not having to like make other cuts so what is what is the truth y'all are making so much money and y'all make it seem as though you're giving us these low deals and oh we're saving y'all money we're slashing price this was 5.99 but we gonna have it so what is the truth because now the folks who were shopping at target can't afford to shop at target no more the people who were shopping at family dollar and dollar tree and all the other stuff they can't afford it anymore to the point that they're stealing they've been stealing from dollar tree and, and family dollar and all those other stores who prey off of poor people and poor neighborhoods i just watched a video describing how that works um and a lot of the products ain't really that cheap but they make money by being in certain areas and having you know a workforce of folks who are you know stressed out at the job like how many times we've we seen videos of somebody working at dollar tree or family dollar having to like fight off folks from doing stuff or dealing with all types of like things at the store like trying to run the whole store it's just one person that these companies are able to make money off of that so i'm thinking about all the things that's going on i went to a to the trip to the grocery store the other day just seeing how expensive things are and all of us are seeing it so to see celebrities come out like constantly like okay girl like i got this new thing and it's not something that is revolutionary that's what be getting me like capitalism doesn't breed innovation at all because it's the same stuff the same things that we're using across all we got 50 different hair products and honestly 90 80 percent of them are marketed towards white people period they're marketed towards the folks who are the, the the majority like that's when it comes to skincare all the other stuff a lot of stuff is not made for black skin even when they say it is because ultimately these companies want a big piece of the pie and the biggest piece of the pie are not black folks so you'll get them you know change a little formulas and, and stuff to make it work for a certain demographic and stuff and make it appeal to another demographic it's like girl I see, I see what is happening. Um, and for somebody like a Rihanna, and I know I'm kind of off, but I'm just kind of like talking about all of the things and just, it's not just Rihanna, it's the whole system itself. Like Rihanna has never really kind of ever been known for her hair. Like, like never been, I've, a lot of folks have never paid attention to her hair. Right now she's posting pictures of her hair and her hair, no shade, and enjoy Rihanna's music. Her hair looks fried. Like, <laughs> it looks damaged. Damn, it's giving Danny the Kane performing their greatest hits on top of Rihanna's scalp. Like, it, it looks fried. And she's now selling that to us. Like, <laughs> y'all would not allow if that was somebody else to sell y'all stuff like that. We wouldn't allow it. They wouldn't even be asked to do it. But Rihanna is able to do it. Very lazy. Very lazy. Like, here y'all go. Like, Fenty hair, like, here y'all go, like, buy it. It's just, like, people are going to do it. People are going to do it. Everybody's selling the same thing. Because, no shade, a lot of this stuff is white label. It's expensive, even more white label. They are not owning any of these factories who are making these products and stuff. Some manufacturers somewhere out, somewhere else, paying workers pennies on the dollar is making this stuff. And my thing again is when is enough enough? Like Rihanna is making enough money from Fenty Beauty and other things that she doesn't need to sell anything else. But again, it's never enough in capitalism. That's why Beyonce is currently like they're saying that she's about to announce her tour uh, for Cowboy Carter soon. And it's like, girl, like no shade. What you could have done is gave us some visuals for folks who are listening to the album, give us something that we don't have to spend no money on because I'm gonna be honest, I really don't see how this tour is going to go. Granted, a lot of folks are hurting. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. Around this time, I normally see a, some folks that I follow out of town traveling stuff. A lot of folks is not going out of the, the country and stuff right now. A couple of folks going, 
but people are not really going. People do not have extra money right now. And the folks who pretend, and it's no shade, because we're all guilty of the pretend to have it, are putting it on Klarna, Affirm, putting it on credit cards. Like I was just reading an article that was mentioning that a lot of my generation and generation after, we are maxing out our credit cards. We're carrying a revolving balance of credit card debt each and every month. The money that we did have that we would use to pay these debts and stuff is now going to higher insurance rates, higher costs of everything like groceries, gas, everything. Like even friends needing to borrow some money. Like right now I have somebody like close to me. I feel like they about to ask me for some money. They won't get to the point, but I feel like they're about to like everybody is going through it and I understand it. But again, these celebrities who live the most lavish of lifestyles are asking us working class folks to continuously fund their pockets when y'all ass can't even get on the mic or the horn and say free Palestine. Y'all can't even say that. Like y'all can't, and y'all see everything online. Y'all see everything online. Y'all see all the criticism. Celebrities are very tuned in and tapped into what is being said about them online. And if they're not, they have a team that is. Like, period. Right now, what was it? Um, Nicki Minaj posted a video of her and that man um, who convicted grape getting on the jet um, headed to wherever they was headed to to dismiss rumors of her and him potentially being divorced or not talking or whatever. And I did a video about that on Patreon, child, because I have some worries about that. But when is enough enough? When is enough enough? Like when does it become like, okay, girl, I'm straight. I don't think it ever does. And I am tired of y'all. Like, I have no interest in purchasing Rihanna stuff. I have no interest, like, in buying any other things. But other folks do. And they'll feel pressured to do it. And I don't think, when we say people don't have a, like, when we say people have a choice, I don't think they do because they're so, like, in this parasocial relationship that it is hard for them to recognize that it, it is even that. And these celebrities know that and they make money off of it. The same way that Beyonce had to get up on her, like she had to do her thing to promote Sacred because like her just posting it and doing that was not gonna work. You seen what happened with Ivy Park? That shit flopped. It was not selling. It was not selling. And I don't care what statement folks is releasing to say, oh, you know, this is the reason why this stuff was not selling. People were not buying Ivy Park like that. It was not doing well and they had to chop it. So uh, Beyonce had to do more than she has done because honestly, we're not interested in buying these things from, from Beyonce. Like Beyonce is music. We want to see her tour. We want to see her do these things. Like we don't care about like hair, perfume, all that other stuff. We want to see you perform. We want, this is what you do. And Rihanna, being Rihanna, like she's been able to sell these products and do these things and I think, you know, maybe the Fenty Hero might work. Maybe it will sell. Who knows? Uh, but it's just like, girl, y'all are greedy. It's, Rihanna, you are greedy. Like, y'all are greedy. And I'm trying to understand, what do y'all think? What do y'all think these folks is getting money from to pay for this stuff? Like, y'all are putting y'all people further and further in debt to fund y'all lavish lifestyles. And I find that weird. It's getting weird. Like, y'all are not hurting. Y'all not hurting for no money. This is not survival. Like this is exploitation. Y'all exploiting y'all fan base. Um, and y'all just don't seem to care. Like y'all just don't seem to care. Like the nerve to come out right now when you're seeing folks like talk about they have to put groceries on a pay later. Like that is where we are at right now. Like folks are having to put groceries, their needs that you have to eat every day. You have to have shelter. Like if you don't, you will become inhuman. Like people are putting rent on pay later. Like girl, it's bad. It is bad. So I don't know. Um, Fenty here. Those are my thoughts. Like I said, Rihanna is not the only one. A lot of them um, are guilty of it. And it's just, 
I just want, what is Rihanna going to sell us that's different from the already products that are out? Like, there are already many products out. This is going to decide what makes this special besides you having your name and brand on it. There is nothing different than this. There is nothing different or extraordinary about this product. Like, it's just not. Like, I, I just, I don't get it. But again, Rihanna is able to sell this stuff because of what she looks like and her celebrity. Uh, and I just need celebrities to understand, like, Girl, sometimes it's okay to say, you know what, I ain't gonna do that to them. I ain't gonna do that to them. Like y'all are, y'all are not paying attention to the things that your fan base and audience wants. Like y'all are not listening to them. Them folks have said they wanted an album. And Rihanna does not have to put out an album. She doesn't have to put out a quote unquote album. But girl, this is what your folks want. They don't want this. Like how you don't even want to work. But you want us to come give you some old money. Like, you see, that shit makes no sense. You don't even want to get in and do the studio and do no music and all the other stuff. You're tired, but you want to sell us some stuff. Girl, you are out of your mind. And I need y'all to get with it or get out quickly. <laughs>